these police divers hunt for bombs. Their daily job is to go down into the murky cold sea to find lost weapons of war, a deadly legacy of the 20th century. The coastal waters of Germany and other European countries are scattered with old munitions. They rarely explode, but some can detonate if hit by an anchor. We go out to sea, here in Schleswig-Holstein Federal State, from Monday to Friday, looking for munitions in the Baltic Sea, the North Sea and in inland waters, to remove this legacy of World War II and retrieve the mines and torpedoes from the water. Today, the bomb hunters are heading to the military port of Kiel. Navy specialists found a submerged explosive device close to the pier there. As a rule, the divers try to extract the weapons for a proper on-land disposal. Only when that is not possible, the bombs are detonated right on the sea floor. If necessary, we set up air bubble curtains to protect marine mammals and then we detonate the munitions. There are many samples of munitions from various periods and of different origin at the bomb unit headquarters. The collection is used to train new police officers. Unexploded bombs found in the ground often make the news, but munitions on the seabed are rarely heard of. And yet, their quantity is unbelievable. It's estimated that we still have 1.6 million tons of munition from the world wars in the North and Baltic Sea, 300,000 tons of which are in the Baltic Sea alone. And that doesn't fully take into account the munitions lost during battle operations. Another day, another hunt. Litterina, a scientific vessel from the Geomar Institute, is heading to a large munitions dump site a few kilometers off the Baltic coast of Germany. Two EU-funded projects will test new methods of finding bombs, bombs that are becoming a growing problem for marine industries and underwater ecosystems. The more we develop offshore resources, the more we encounter these munitions, the more they have to be cleaned up. So right now, I think the, the biggest impetus for cleaning them up is wind farm installation, cable laying, and so forth. The other side of it is all of these munitions are in these metal casings, and they're all, they've been corroding for 70, 80 years. We're coming up to a point where all of the chemicals that are inside are all going to start coming out. Much of the munitions on the seabed, both conventional and chemical, were deliberately disposed of in large numbers by the armed forces of many different countries. Our knowledge of such dump sites is patchy. This is our AOV Luise. This is an autonomous underwater vehicle. Our robot that we use today to take some pictures of the seafloor and also take some measurements with a magnetometer. Autonomous underwater vehicles explore the seafloor quickly and efficiently. Several of these devices can work simultaneously, which greatly reduces the costs. On the seafloor, we find a hoard of decaying munitions that includes two metre long bombshells and bare chunks of toxic explosives. Similar dump sites can be found off the coasts of various countries in Europe and around the world. Relic munitions and unexploded ordnance are a global problem, ubiquitously affecting European coastal waters. The risk of possible detonations and environmental contamination hinders the development of many sectors of the blue economy, including offshore energy, shipping, aquaculture and tourism. The BASTA project vehicle explores the seafloor along a program's trajectory, transmitting collected data to the ship. The detailed photos and magnetic measurements, together with results of acoustic scanning, reveal the exact shape of the suspicious objects and the presence of metal in their composition. Combining the camera footage and the magnetic signatures we measure, we, in many cases, can get a good idea what the object might be. Chemical analysis gives even more clarity. 
Scientists from the Explotect project are developing a sampling system with special filters for catching dissolved particles of explosive materials from the seawater. Back on the ship, the samples are analysed with a compact mass spectrometer that indicates the concentration of various explosives. This method can drastically speed up detection of underwater munitions. We go from it taking two to three months to go from collecting a sample to having the data to now, in theory, when everything works, in 15 minutes we can go from a water sample to, a, um, to an actual data point. Um, and in this case, where we actually want to go to sea and look for munitions, um, we need that kind of rapid response. Developers call this new weapon in the fight against underwater munitions a silver bullet. It hits the target for many industrial sectors that now spend a lot of time and resources clearing unexploded ordnances, oxos, off the seabed. Because of the simplicity of the technology, we will be able to adapt it to different kinds of structures. So this will enable us to do, for example, long-term permanent environmental monitoring at known OXO fields. That's very important um, also for deciding where to start the clearance first. But how can the huge amount of data collected by underwater vehicles be processed? Artificial intelligence could help. EGEOS, a company based in Kiel, is developing a software platform that brings together new scientific data and relevant historic records like old archives documenting coastal military operations. The algorithms look for relevant data patterns, suggesting areas that are likely to be contaminated with munitions. Automation is definitely helping. So um, today it's still um, a process that is quite manual, but step by step we are getting smarter. We are getting smarter from the side of data analytics. We are getting smarter from the perspective of autonomous underwater vehicles, autonomous sensors that are capturing this data, and that makes the whole process cheaper. Clearing the seabed is a task with huge economic potential. Private companies are already developing large-scale projects for the recovery and proper disposal of underwater munitions. There's a whole industry of people who go out and find munitions and clean them up. Um, and if you talk to them and ask them, they say, we can absolutely deal with this problem. It's really just a question of, is the economic support there to make it happen? Huge masses of underwater munitions are rusting and will release toxic content into the seas in the near future. Can we stop this ticking time bomb before it's too late? <laughs>